Eli, welcome to the mystical city of God, presenting the Venerable Mary of Agreda's unmatched history of the Mother of God from her eternal inception in the mind of God to her glorious coronation in heaven. This complete Marian history, four volumes approaching 2,700 pages, bears the name the mystical city of God as it was the name given to God's mother, drawn from chapter 21 of the Apocalypse by the Queen's spiritual daughter, Mary of Agreda. Last week, we delved into the origins of the four Gospels, focusing on how the Blessed Virgin prompted the four evangelists to begin writing. Staying focused on Mary's role in assisting the infant church, this week we look at what Mary of Agreda has to say about Mary's part in sending forth the 12 apostles to evangelize the entire world. And if you're a premium member, you'll get the full account of what Mar Venerable Mary of Agreda had to say, laying out that in the four volumes of the Mystical City of God. The extended version is our way of thanking you for your financial support that enables us to make videos like this possible. Thank you. And if you happen to be watching the shorter free version on YouTube, please hit that like and subscribe button and consider supporting us by becoming a premium member for just $10 a month. With me, of course, is our managing editor, the man who is larger than life itself, Rodney Pellet <laughs> here. Uh, Rodney, we're talking about this, uh, the assistance of Mary's role, specifically, in, you know, we can talk about her in the mind of God and how she's coordinated in heaven, mm -hmm. but y you took a special interest when reading the books uh, on her role, especially in the infant church and how she helped things get going back then. Yeah, it's really amazing because, you know, and we mentioned this, you know, last week in the show that there's very little in scripture scriptures to discuss really well really scriptures doesn't say anything about our lady's hand in it and to have this glimpse into how, really just how influential she was in the early church is really wonderful it's it really it feeds the devotion i think because when you see how devoted our lady was or is to the early church how she loved the apostles she treated the apostles exactly like she treated her son she called them her son uh and, and that, dressed them as her son made two she dressed them, them right them yeah that whole we'll talk about that in a little bit but yeah um so the way that she loved the early church and helped foster it is really beautiful. This is really inspiring. Well, we had the, the, the feast instituted by Paul VI uh, in the 60s there, mm -hmm. Mary, Mother of the Church. Yeah. And I don't think you would really understand Mother of the Church until you go through Mary of Regretta's yeah. account of what she actually did for the infant church, mm -hmm. uh, what God did through her. Right. And uh, in, in her humility, always trying to... Um, <laughs> very low key and, mm -hmm. and on the on the download, uh, you know, help and assist when she can. Um, we're going to go to uh, volume four and we're in uh, chapter uh, 13 of volume four. And it's about sending out the 12 apostles here. But before that happened, something else really interesting happened um, in paragraph 216 of the uh, 222 is where they start sending out the apostles. Mm -hmm. But in 216, paragraph backed up just a little bit, says just before sending out the apostles, St. Peter said, we must all soon depart to and preach throughout the globe mm -hmm. according to the command of the Lord before ascending, before he ascended into heaven. And that was Matthew 28, 19, mm -hmm. when he says, you know, go forth and teach all mm -hmm. nations. Well, they haven't really done that yet. Right. It's coming up on a year of our Lord's uh, death and they're still uh, in various parts of around Jerusalem and, right. you know, uh, the uh, uh, talking to different people there. Stephen is, is getting martyred at this time in the local area. Then it's, uh, but none of the apostles have gone out yet. St. James hasn't been martyred. He didn't go to Spain yet, didn't come back yet and get martyred and everything else. So in paragraph 217, they're talking about having a creed. Hmm. They haven't had the Apostles' Creed yet. And I'd like to ask viewers, you know, is there, how many articles in the creed are there? And most people would say, well, 12, right? And I'd have to say, well, maybe not, maybe not. Let's, let's find out here in a minute. It was something that it kind of shocked me. And one of those times, I'm up at five in the morning doing fact checking, right? Reading this, uh, not for this show, it was just in, in general, as my spiritual reading. And uh, when it came across, I'm like, huh, what? And it took me quite a while to get that untangled. But let's just say she's in agreement with St. Thomas Aquinas, Mary Regretta is. Um, 
Now here's a really boss ceremony. Okay, I wish these happened all the time. But it said uh, they, they celebrated Mass, the communion, all prostrate, including the Blessed Mother, calling on the Holy Ghost uh, for assistance because they're, they're wanting to partition the world, send out all the apostles here. And now it says they heard the rumblings of thunder. And they're, they're in the cynical in Jerusalem there, the, the, the upper room, what they talk about. They heard the rumblings of thunder. Now, this is not on Pentecost. This is a year, almost a year later. As on the first coming down of the Holy Ghost, now it would have been at Pentecost, upon the gathering of the faithful uh, at the same time, the cynical was filled with light and splendor, and all were enlightened by the Holy Spirit. So we're all like, whoa, this is really something going on. We understand all this. We know what's happening here. And then the Most Blessed Mary asked each of the apostles to define a mystery. Now, this is, this is what she, the, it says the Blessed Mother asked hmm. each of the apostles to define a mystery. And you would think, well, there's how many apostles? Twelve, right? They already had Matthias mm -hmm. right. uh, put in there to replace Judas. So you should get 12 mysteries. Well, maybe not. <laughs> Uh, some people double dipped. Okay. <laughs> there we go. According to the divine, how the divine spirit should inspire them. But Mary asked them mm -hmm. to do this. Okay. Thereupon, St. Peter began and was followed by the rest in the following order. St. Peter says, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. We'll count that as one article. St. Andrew, his brother, says, and in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. We're at two. Now St. James the Greater, Mary of Agreta has this listed. Oh, you can't really see that. I wouldn't suppose it's too small to print. But she has this listed as three and four. Hmm. Three and four. St. James the Greater says three and four. Who was conceived through the operation of the Holy Ghost and born of the Virgin Mary. That's considered two by Mary of Agreta. I'm like, hmm, okay. I'm reading along. I didn't think anything. I, when I did that, this was... I don't know, maybe a year, two, three years ago. Then comes uh, St. John, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. That's counted as one. Then we have St. Thomas, whose name means twin, and according to his name, he has two <laughs> articles given, six and seven. Descended into hell and arose from the dead on the third day. Number eight, St. James the Less, ascended into heaven, seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, but that's counted as one. His ascension into heaven and to the right hand of the Father. Number nine, Philip. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. Bartholomew, ten, I believe in the Holy Ghost. Fair enough, that's one, another one. So, And then St. Matthew in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints. That's not two, it's Catholic Church is the communion of saints. St. Simon, forgiveness of sins. St. Thaddeus, the resurrection of the flesh, the resurrection of the dead. And Matthias, Life everlasting, amen. That's considered 14 by Mary Vergretta. And I'm like, I don't know if that's right, because every time I'm thinking, uh oh, she just made a mistake, everything's over with. You know, whenever you can come to like a full blown, okay, that's wrong, I would pull the plug on everything, right? Never, haven't happened yet. Um, and I get reading St. Thomas. Here's, here's a lesson for you out there Google uh, St. Thomas' number of articles in the Creed, mm -hmm. and he's gonna say 14. Isn't that something? Huh. He said seven of them apply to the Godhead and seven of them apply to the uh, human nature of Christ. Straight up. So if, if she's wrong, St. Thomas Aquinas <laughs> is wrong too. And, uh, you know, if you want to go that route, that's fine. But just know that you're taking St. Thomas Aquinas down with, with her on that. Um, anyway, they had the symbol. They call it the symbol, the, the, the creed. They call it the symbol of our faith which uh, we ordinarily call the Creed, the Apostles established after the martyrdom of St. Stephen, so that was after that time, and before the end of the first year of the death of our Savior. That type of detail, we'd like to get into some of that next week, the date line in some of these things. It's just so interesting, because then you have everything squared away. When was the Apostles' Creed written? Well, it was right after the death of St. Stephen, but not a year after our Lord died. Mm. Boom, that like dials it in for you. Yeah, yeah. The precision is amazing. Yeah. yeah, and this goes all the way through without any contradiction. It's just like, okay, you knew what you were talking about. I don't know how you knew it, but you knew it. <laughs> and um, 
That led many people to uh, who were uh, trying to shoot it down later on said, well, she couldn't have written it herself mm. because how could she know all this stuff? Yeah, right, right. I, ask God. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, Mary, Blessed Virgin Mary, in paragraph 222, we're getting up to the partitioning now. She made innumerable copies of this and sent it out without delay to all the disciples preaching in different parts of Palestine, the local area. She sent several copies to each one for distribution with a special letter in which she informed them the measures taken by the apostles and of their orders that it should be accepted and professed by all the faithful. But she's the secretary there. Mm -hmm. She's writing it by her own hand and making sure copies and sending Some of these were she's sending out by her angels. Yeah, she's sending it out ATS, Angel Transit System. Yeah, yeah I I mean, yeah. uh, which but, she used extensively, yeah. But she's asking the apostles, "Can you each do one, one, an article of faith?" And then when they do, she's writing it all down and sending it out to everybody. Man, if that's not like yeah. mother of the church, yeah. Um, as the disciples were scattered through the different cities near and far, she sent the symbol and letter to those in neighboring a neighborhood by some of the faithful, and here you go, and to those farther off by her angels. So uh, that's the thing. And, and we were talking about the gifts of tongues at 225, paragraph 225. This is all preceding that immediate going out into the world. Now they have the creed. Mm -hmm. Okay. They don't have the gospels yet. Right. The gospels we talked about last week have not been written yet. Hmm. So the, uh, that comes later in about paragraphs four or 500. And that shows, too, that the... Um, because that, that they all came back for the Council of Jerusalem. Right. And at the Council of Jerusalem, that's when they said, Matthew, you're going to write this one. Luke, Mark, yeah, you're yeah, going to yeah. write one. And John, you're going to write one. That had the Council of Jerusalem. But that's when they came back and gathered. St. Paul was already off preaching and teaching mm -hmm. and that type of thing. So it shows uh, to the Protestants, also to Catholics who may not know, that it was uh, the good news was already going out to the world before right. the good news was written. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we are a preaching, teaching, yeah. evangelist. Go forth and teach all nations, not hurry up and write it down. And, of course, they were preaching and teaching through the whole first century, and it wasn't all written down until St. John wrote his uh, right. gospel at the very end, like 58 A.D. or so. And then uh, the book of Revelation. So not all the epistles were written even by that time. So, um. It says the gift of tongues likewise continued uh, for the Holy Spirit gave it uh, not only on the day of Pentecost, but to many of the faithful afterwards who assisted in preaching or giving instruction to the new believers. And when they spoke, this is very important here. It's almost like a gift of ears, not a gift of tongues. Whenever they spoke or preached to many together of different nationalities, kind of what happened at Pentecost, they were understood by each nationality, get this, though they spoke only in the Hebrew tongue. Hmm. This is right, Mary of I'm reading. So they only spoke in their own native tongue, and yet they were heard by so many. And that's exactly yeah. what was going on at Pentecost at the same time. So then we're getting to the partitioning. Already a full year had passed since the death of the Savior. And now the apostles, by divine impulse, began to consider about going forth to preach the faith throughout the world. So a, a year, a little over a year has passed now. St. Peter prayed for divine assistance. And once again, we're going to have one of these boss moves where it's all lit up, you know, and voices are heard. Uh, I'm sure that's why the, the, uh, the, the popes yeah. approve this because they're like, yeah, yeah, that's what happens when popes speak, man. The whole place lights up and you get the voice <laughs> of God and all this stuff. So... At the ending of this prayer, praying for divine assistance, once again, a wonderful light descended upon the cenacle. And that, I guess, place holds something like 150, I don't know, 150 people, something mm, like that. It's okay. big enough to hold. It, that's also where the Last Supper was. Wasn't yeah, that's it? the yeah. upper room yeah. where the Last Supper was. That's the upper room where the apostles were gathered, even though the board doors were mm -hmm. barred. Right. And Jesus appeared amongst them. And, you know, where St. Thomas, you know, put your finger to my side and all that yeah, type yeah. of thing. That's the upper room. Nice. So that's the cenacle. So um, a light descended upon the cenacle, surrounding them all, and a voice was heard saying, My vicar Peter shall point out the province which falls to each one. I shall govern and direct him by my light and spirit. St. Peter, hearing the voice, proceeded to partition out the provinces he began with himself and said. So here you have very obvious God directing the church mm -hmm. through the first pope. Right. Okay. And I'm, I, I think that's probably you know, five popes defended this writing. <laughs> yeah. Saying, yeah, 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 that's, that's going on right there. That, that's us. That's the popes. And St. Peter starts off. He says, uh, I, 
my Lord, speaking to God, offer myself to suffer and die in imitation of my Lord and Redeemer. He did that upside down. Mm -hmm. yeah. He died. He was not worthy to die upright. But so he. This is all prophecy. Mm -hmm. He's like, I'm gonna. Right. This is gonna happen to me. Uh, even though in in the Gospel of John it says. Um, St. John says, you know, when, of Jesus that said, you know, there, you, you go about where you want now, but one day there will be someone that binds your hands and mm -hmm. takes you where you not want to go, right. talking about his future martyrdom. So we'll get into the uh, other 11 apostles if you're a premium member. There we go. So uh, that's it for our, our shorter version for the non-premium members. We'll see you next week when we talk about the first of all Marian apparitions, when Mary came to save one of the apostles from martyrdom.